When measurements of an observable are performed on a large ensemble of equivalent quantum systems, we generally cannot predict the precise outcome of each individual measurement. Instead, quantum mechanics allows us to predict the probability distribution of these measurement outcomes. An important characteristic of such a distribution is its mean, known in quantum mechanics as the expectation value of the observable. We have already learned how to calculate expectation values. Now, we will turn to another important characteristic of the distribution, the uncertainty. Let's consider an observable, O, which could for example denote the position or momentum of a quantum particle. Suppose this curve represents the probability density of O. That is, if we take a tiny interval delta, the corresponding area under the curve will give the probability that the outcome of a measurement of O falls within the delta interval. The expectation value of O, which we already know how to calculate, is the average outcome of a large number of measurements of O, each performed on a system in the same quantum state. We now want to quantify the width of the probability distribution, which we will denote by delta O. There are different mathematical approaches to measuring the width of a distribution. The one most commonly used in quantum mechanics is based on the standard deviation, which, in the terminology of quantum mechanics, is referred to as uncertainty. Let's review what it means and how it is calculated. Instead of looking at the value of O itself, we focus on the deviation of O from its mean, specifically O minus O mean. One might naively think that the average of this quantity would quantify the width of the probability distribution. However, this is not the case, as negative deviations cancel out positive ones, causing the average of O minus O mean to be small, even for very broad distributions. For instance, the average of O minus O mean is zero for any symmetric distribution, no matter how wide. To address this problem, we can focus on the square of O minus O mean, and average that instead. This average is consistently positive and correlates directly with the width of the distribution. By definition, it is equivalent to the square of the uncertainty delta O. Let's now make a few rearrangements and rewrite this expression in a more computationally friendly manner. Expanding the square, we obtain the following. Next, we average each of the three terms separately, keeping in mind that O mean is just a number, and as such, is not affected by the averaging operation. Finally, by combining the last two terms into minus O mean squared, and taking the square root of the right-hand side, we arrive at this expression for the uncertainty, delta O. So, to find the uncertainty of an observable for a system in a given state, one needs to calculate two expectation values, that of the observable itself and that of its square. By subtracting the former from the latter and taking the square root of the difference, one obtains the desired uncertainty. To see how this works in practice, let's look at our recurring example system, a coherent state of a harmonic oscillator. Let's determine the uncertainties in position and momentum for a particle of mass m undergoing simple harmonic oscillations with frequency omega. We'll assume that the particle is described by the same coherent state wave function that we thoroughly explored earlier. The good news is that we won't need to perform difficult calculations this time, as we've already done all the necessary integrals. As we've seen previously, the expectation value of position equals x sub zero, cosine omega t. Earlier, we found the following expression for the expectation value of the particle's potential energy. Since the potential energy operator is simply a constant, m omega squared over 2, multiplied by x squared, we can interpret this expectation value as the constant, times the expectation value of x squared. From here, we find the expectation value of x squared. We can now calculate the uncertainty in position as the square root of the mean of x squared minus the square of the mean of x. The result turns out to be the square root of h bar over 2m omega. The calculation of the uncertainty in momentum proceeds along the same lines. First, we recall the expression previously obtained for the expectation value of the particle's momentum. Then, we take the mean kinetic energy of the system, previously obtained, and rewrite it as the expectation value of the momentum squared divided by twice the particle's mass. From the last equation, we obtain the expectation value of p squared. Lastly, equipped with the expectation values of p and p squared, we find the uncertainty in the particle's momentum. It appears to be the square root of half of h bar m omega. So, we've established the uncertainties of the position and momentum of the oscillating particle. 
Both are found to be constant over time and directly proportional to the square root of h bar. This constancy is a notable characteristic of coherent states. For more generic states, both uncertainties would vary with time. Let's also observe the following. When we multiply delta x and delta p together, we get a very simple result, half of h bar. As we'll soon discover, h bar over 2 represents the smallest possible value of the product of the uncertainties in position and momentum. This is the celebrated Heisenberg uncertainty principle.